Hola and welcome! Now today I'm going to start a short Electronica series with a simple project, a joystick tester. I could have easily started and finished this project in a single video, however, quite a few of you have requested a basic electronics and soldering tutorial. So let's begin. So what I'm going to do today is actually build a DB9 joystick joypad tester, which is quite a simple circuit. and. Um, I am doing it with uh, AA batteries, well, not permanently, temporarily. So the plan is to actually do it with a CR2032 lithium 3 volt cell, but it's not the actual holder itself hasn't, you know, arrived yet. So what I'm going to do is, um, you know, just for this video, just to use, um, you know, two AA batteries, which again 3 volts. So you know, what I'm going to do is when I when the thingy arrives, I'm just going to like, you know, take this out, replace it with that. Simple as. Okay, so it's basically just a simple circuit. I've seen many people build this around and um, it's all it is is like you know the five volts and ground and then you have from ground to each of the connections on the um, uh, DB9 port you know uh, the joystick in other words uh, it's just like you know connecting that through an LED to each one of those pins so you know if you press fire or something it just creates a contact which you know lights on the LEDs. It's just as simple as that. So what I'm going to do today actually I have had quite a few people ask me and request that I slightly slow down a bit when regard with regards to electronics and um, you know explain what I'm doing throughout basically vocalize my thoughts <laughs> and um, you know I, quite a few people have asked me uh, this this past couple of weeks after doing the Atari 2600 you know, composite mod and everything that how do I, from the uh, schema schematic, <laughs> from the freaking schematic, <laughs> from the schematic to this, <laughs> what's wrong, I'm freaking tongue tied, uh, to the actual board itself. So what I'm going to do is double this um, up as a, this um, video up as a basic tutorial and also other questions about different types of boards that you can get. Uh, it's only like, you know, two that <laughs> I've ever used. Okay, I would like to take a short minute to thank my patrons because uh, with the patron money I have, I bought myself a nice precision uh, screwdriver set and uh, it has all those, do you remember those freaking, if you watched my Amiga 500 video, I was uh, looking around the house going crazy looking for the stupid freaking star screws. <laughs> <laughs> the tor tor egg Torx screws thing. Now I have all these freaking Torx star screw things that I can, you know, ever need now. So I wish to say, you know, a very big thank you to the patrons for making it easier for me. And also, I'm saving up for a hand drill so I can, you know, just have a freaking portable drill that I can use because that's so, you know, making holes and things is just. Oh. So once again, thanks so much to my patrons, really, thanks so much. Okay, so here I have my delicious box of software with our board. <laughs> or strip board, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay, I'm actually, I just got this from the attic, and I haven't been inside this for ages. Okay, put me in. Okay, so here I have, wow, I got a chat more than I realized. Oh man, I need to sort out my... <laughs> I need to sort out my electronics. Freaking flyback. Yes, I've messed around with high voltage before. <laughs> Freaking, where's Veraboard when you need it? Okay, so now this is Veraboard. Veraboard or Stripboard. Uh, you know, either way you can call it. And this has got strips going horizontally. Or freaking vertically if you want to, you know be pedantic about it. <laughs> so with a component you would do that and solder them in like this. Okay so here I have um, you know inserted the resistor here you know, in this hole and in this hole and the LEDs if you want to like pop it out like that we can see the freaking both of them now. <laughs> and um, if you turn the board around this is the LED. Now the LED is you know going from the top one it's joining onto that and the second one is just you know going somewhere else and the third one so you're gonna apply the voltage to you know this one and this one okay now there is a better way of doing that now let's say let's put the led back in again and uh you know the top whole thingy and you need a resistor and you put the resistor in next to it just to like you know, like you know save space just put it like this 
However, now you have a problem here of the, um, the LED going to the resistor, that's fine, but the resistor joining with that that part so it's like the resistor is like redundant now <laughs> so what you need to do here is solder them in and you get something called a track cutter here which is as you can see i think it's just like a drill bit with a handle <laughs> and you just you know you rotate it like you know once or twice three times and you have made there you cut the track there so this part is not. So this is basically how you would, you know, create a circuit on Veraboard. And uh, it's good for like, you know, small and simple things um, and all that. And it, But the thing is, and you also need link wire, uh, you know, if you want to connect, you know, certain things, you know, from here to uh, all the way across the board. So yeah, that's Veraboard. And to be honest, um, I've outgrown it <laughs> a bit. I've gone on the matrix board, which is my favorite, you know, one. Uh, so with matrix board All these pins here all these like, you know pin terminal points these are You know separate. It's just none of them are connected. So what you can do is you can create links with the solder itself or else use the component leg itself and then you kind of like bend it over like this to connect it to something else down here you know, so this I much prefer, and you can like go in any direction, whatever you like. Whereas with the Vera board, you gotta plan it out way more, you know, because of the horizontal strips. So as always, I'm gonna use uh, matrix board because I favor that. However, if you're starting out, it'd be probably be an idea using Vera board. But the thing is, you cannot build high current circuits with this because um, these strips here. They cannot handle too much current. And there is, of course, you know, PCB, which is, you know, printed circuit board. You you can print it out or you can draw it. And there's a lot of chemicals or UV or something like this involved. And I haven't, you know, dabbled with that myself. I haven't felt the need to, to be honest. So, yeah. Okay, so now for the second question, how to put this under that? You know, a lot of people who are more advanced in electronics than I am, they actually plan their, you know, <laughs> plan their circuit out. What I do, I just do it visually. I don't even plan it. Um, the only thing I would plan is where to put the LEDs as in, you know, up, down, left, right, you know, because this is a joystick tester and then the two fire buttons. Uh, however, with these, of course, I'm going to like, you know, fix these under the case here, which is this. So I'm going to be, you know, first thing going to be drilling holes into the, you know, so the LEDs are not going to be attached to the board. Or should I make them attach them, be attached to the board? I'm wondering now. Okay, so we have a three volt supply here with my gorgeous, pretty any loop batteries. It lights up and very happy. <laughs> so these uh, resistors I've used are uh, 50 ohms, and that's just that's just enough. Maybe look in my nice, pretty box of components here <laughs> to kind of find another color. That would be more suited. So, you know what? Let's make it a bit fancy and use a bicolor LED for the two buttons. So either button, one button will do a different color to the, to the other one. I think that would be nicer. Alright, so here we have that uh, tricolor LED. Actually, it's not bicolor, it's tricolor, uh, I realized. And one of the um, four legs is negative and the other three are positive so if you were to kind of you know contact the resistor here you will see red on the other one the center one you will see green and on the outer edge one you will see blue and that i think i mean it's a shame because one of these is going to go to waste <laughs> but um unless there's like three fire buttons Actually, you know what? Something's just freaking occurred to me. Why am I using these, you know, diddly little freaking things? I've just like, you know, I've got an abundance of freaking LEDs here. And uh, I've got four one centimeter gorgeous LEDs here. <laughs> so why am I not using these? You know, it's just, it's got a it's big freaking case. Let's just, you know, make it all nice. Okay, so we have our green one here. As you can see, you know something, now that I've put these big LEDs, I think it's probably wise to use double A's now. 
you know what? I've said screw you to the freaking practicality of the circuit. What I've started to do, if you want practicality, you know, use these low powered or low current LEDs and, um, you know, use a button coin cell, which is, you know, this thing, uh, this CR2032 thing. Uh, but I think I'm going to use this and use these big giant LEDs because I just want it. It's so pretty. <laughs> When I like, when let's say I like blue LEDs, I like a certain shade of blue. Yes, I know I'm picky. <laughs> I'm pedantic about visual stuff. Look at this green. Okay, I don't know if you can tell or not by this, but the diddly one is freaking cyan. It's kind of like a turquoisey blue, whereas that's more like an indigo blue. I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up or not, but that's the blue I want. But it's a freaking diddly one. So what I'm gonna do is just like you know, still gonna have to use the bigger one, aren't I? <laughs> So yeah, that's my freaking stance on blue LEDs. I like the the cyan kind of turquoisey kind of. Okay, so looking at our circuit diagram here or our schematic, <laughs> we have um, the plus felt, which is this red you know, thing going down, and the red is what joins all the LEDs. Now. The red goes to a resistor, then an LED. Each LED is a resistor, then an LED, and so forth. So we can use the three colors in the uh, tricolor LED. Fantastic! Yeah, I like when things work out like this. <laughs> okay, so that's cool. We've got tricolor LED and up, down, left, right. So the uh, common one is the um, plus volts, plus five volts, yeah? Okay, so what we want to do here now is we want to mount these LEDs. I've marked them, you know, where I want them to be. That's going to be up, down, you know, left and right. So the up, I want it to be blue. No, it's green. Green is going to be right. So what we want to do is the positive. The actual positive pin is going to be on the inside. Now, you will understand why it's easier to join inside up into a little point and then you know take it somewhere rather than join the freaking outside up do you know what i'm saying yellow is the left again positive on the inside okay so what i'm gonna do in the center here is the resistors now from um each of these let's put a resistor going to the center and finally this one ideally i should have done the resistors first <laughs> but we live and learn. <laughs> I still haven't learned yet. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is actually I should have just I'm gonna take these out. Do you know why? Because it's just easier that way. <laughs> I've lived enough learn. <laughs> okay, so we have that uh, and we need to solder these in and join the center part here. So let's do that now. It looks like a scrunchy mess on the other side, but not to worry. Okay, what I personally tend to do here is um, every now and then just add some solder onto the tip. Okay, so a little bit of a tip or more like an insight into how I think when I'm soldering. Can you see the tip of the iron there and uh, the solder that I have here? Now, if you were to put the solder on here, it goes on easily. It sticks on it easily, right? And that is because that the soldering iron is hot and the solder is attracted to it. So what I tend to do is tend to heat up the component and think of it as an extension of the soldering iron and therefore the heat of it will you know attract the solder therefore it will stick on just like it's doing now and you know successfully tinned. Now you put the uh, the iron under that then you're heating the leg of the um, resistor and the pad at the bottom and then you just kind of add a tiny bit there and it should you know join in like it just has there yeah that and the same with the others with the matrix part you gotta always um solder the component in don't just kind of like leave it there pull its leg down there and solder it somewhere else you have to solder it you know firm into place like that and now the other side one, this one is going to lead us somewhere else, you yeah? know, outside this flower that I've created. <laughs> so, um, how I join with this is if it's like close together like that, I just, you know, I put a blob in the center there of the pad and just like join all these together like this. 
all these are joined and there's this one that's going somewhere else now let's solder the other end of these resistors in here but we do not want to cut these off just yet what we want to do is just all we do is solder them in like that. again heat the heat the um the leg of the component and the pad and then add a little bit of solder little less is more seriously with soldering less is more so again heat that and add a little bit and that's it yeah we're done here okay so now i want this led protruding out at the top here right now again remember the longer one is positive that goes you know next to the resistor and the top one is negative so that so we have this thing going on you see what i mean like here now you may be asking why is she making a joystick tester well i'm making it because there's going to be there's a series of videos coming up that i'm going to be using the joystick tester a lot and i don't want to use it on the computers to test stuff because i don't want to goof up my computers so it's like it's much better using it and can you see what I mean? This is gonna protrude out the case like this. Actually, that's a bit too much. You need to push it in just a little bit more. And the rest of the LEDs, all you wanna do is just do exactly the same. Uh, I'll do one showing you and I will just do the, the rest off camera. Okay, so this one is the white LED, which is, you know, joystick down. And we wanna put the positive at the top. A negative at the bottom. Let's do them in three rows of three, three dots I mean, and again push it down to where you would like it. Again heat the component leg and the pad and then add a little bit of solder. And if you find that you know it doesn't, it's not that easy then just add a bit of solder to the tip, just a little, so that kind of like you know heats up quicker and you just join these together the uh, resistor and that and that's it and we just cut the resistor leg well that's the LED leg and cut the resistor cut the resistor leg cut the LED leg and that's it and the same with the rest of them okay so we have done the uh, LEDs here we've uh, soldered them all on and uh, as you can see here, the center part that is the positive here, which actually let's connect the positive of the three volt battery to this. Yeah. And the negative of each is gonna be the other side of each LED. So the outer side of each LED is gonna be the negative. So let's test this. Top one, up, blue, side, I mean right, it's green, bottom, white and right is yellow and that's it uh for the you know main part we've actually done a lot of the circuit to be honest and what i have just uh done here is um can you see that center point there that center point is positive that center point is this red line here and uh, don't forget the fire one two and three forget that i'm talking about left right up and down yeah we'll sort out the fires afterwards so this from here all the way to here you know we've just done this and you know these um, left right up down LEDs so these are gonna go separate ways uh, the other side of each LED now let's uh, do the fire actually the fire what is what I'm gonna do is do terminal pins here because it's too close here the fire I'm gonna like you know separate wires coming from the board going to an LED you know that kind of thing going on here each LED has to have its dedicated resistor you know you cannot have one resistor and you know resisting <laughs> for three LEDs <laughs> you have to have you know okay now just miss a hole in between each one you know so you're having you know resistor miss a hole resistor miss a hole resistor Okay, so the positive goes to this resistor here, the end one here. Okay, so add some a little bit of solder to the tip. And then again, heat the component, heat the pad. And then... Add a little solder. 
we go. Sandra one. Ah, I just made a little mistake here. What I should have done is instead of cutting the freaking resistor leg off, I should have bent it all across here and joined all three these three together. So I will use this as an opportunity to show you how to make you know track using solder. Now what you want to do is just let's say for example I'm gonna make a track between this and this all the way along. Yeah? Now the the dots, the matrix dots, whatever things in between do that yeah now these two heat them join them yeah now don't do not join this one that because this one's still cooling down yeah so what you want to do is this one and this one the ones which are not linked yeah you want to do that yeah and that's obviously at the end now you wait for this dude to cool a bit and then you just you know, heat this dude up and link a little bit of solder and that's it. Yeah? There we go. And you wait for, you know, this to cool again and then you just finally join this one with this one. It's an idea not to have your soldering station too hot when you're doing this. When you're making tracks like this, are these two joined? Yes, they are. Um, because, you know, it just becomes too, it's too hot, therefore it'll just keep breaking. Um, let's kind of check if that is, yeah, that is, that's fine, it's done. So we have positive here, coming into this, uh, three resistors, and each of these three resistors is going to have their separate terminal. Let me get out the uh, terminal pins, terminal pins, or actually I don't know what are their name they have, PCB pins, or something like this. So terminal pins. Okay, I've just this I've just realized something. Took me a freaking while. <laughs> Is that I we cannot use a tricolor LED. Do you know why? Because the um, ground is all the same. It's common in uh, these three diodes. And the ground we need uh, to be separate for each one. Yeah, <laughs> each uh, fire two, fire three, and fire. They need to be separate, so it cannot be common. So it would just, we were just, you know, I just want to make a freaking one single. <laughs> okay, so what we need to do now is use three separate LEDs, and uh, yeah, this still stands. You still need three resistors here, so that's cool. So you need to heat the terminal pin or the component leg or something to the temperature, which it will melt the solder itself. I'll leave it at that for now since the video is already very long. There is still more to go and more exciting things to come, so do stick around for part 2. Thanks for watching and thank you so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, I will say adios. I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons. James Burr, GadgetUK164, Robert Menis, Casual Commodore, Sophie Leroy, Jan Beta. Hazemaker, Sean O'Keefe, Rudiger Stiedel, Al Hunt, Cameron Armstrong, Rofe Otterstein, Linus Johansson, Karsten Larabad, and Anthony Whittington. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below as well as the links to my patrons' websites or YouTube channels.